What's going on Dolphins fans? It's Connor with the Dolphins Dive and in today's video we're going to be breaking down the top offensive free agents the Dolphins can target. Before I hop into today's video just a quick little plug to the merch shop the DolphinsDive.com you can get stuff like this the two a time we got some Mike McDaniel McLovin shirts um, as well as some other merchandise if you have any suggestions on the kind of merch you'd like to see comment that down below but without further ado we're going to hop right into it starting with a lot of Dolphins fans top need that they want filled is running back so there's actually a pretty big running back market in terms of uh free agents out there i'm gonna start with the homegrown guys or not homegrown but the home talent um with some options starting with raheem Mostert. um he just had a career high in carries and yards coming off a phenomenal year 4.9 yards per carry his only downfall was probably uh the, he got injured a couple times but the last injury was something that isn't necessarily to be concerned about i believe it was like a thumb so i'm not too worried about raheem Mostert's injuries I think for his projected value, which Spot Track has at one year, two point two million, I would bring him back all day, every day. Especially a one-year deal, you're not held for a long period of time. Guy that knows the scheme inside out, played some of his best ball with us, um, and obviously we, he's known for his speed. But I really love the power that he ran with last season, so I think he's a no-brainer to bring back to the Dolphins, especially at a cheap price. Jeff Wilson, obviously, also a free agent. We traded for him at the deadline. He also had a career year, and he's very notorious for running very hard. Once again, knows the scheme very well with a projected value of one year, 2.9 mil. I'd be more than happy if we've kind of run it back with the backfield with Jeff Wilson, Raheem Mostert, Salon Ahmed, but that'll be seen. Um, another guy, basically everyone I'm listing is coming up for career career year, which is just funny, but Miles Sanders, form, formerly with the Eagles, might resign with them, who knows. Uh, obviously had a career year in rushing. He's a very good zone runner, which is kind of the kind of run scheme the Dolphins run. So he's a guy that I think could transcend into the scheme. Uh, projected a two-year 14.4 million, which is a 7.2 average, which is a little more than we paid Chase Edmonds. So for the value, he's not awful, but I feel like the Dolphins have consistently been burned by paying not top dollar, but like We'll pay like five mil here, six mil here for like a Chase Edmonds, a Jordan Mon uh, Jordan Howard. But like we've gone kind of like the the medium range running back, and it never seems to pan out. So I don't know if that's necessarily a move that I think we should make. But he's a potential option that would fit the scheme. Miles Sanders, he's pretty young still, not too expensive. So that's also an option. Another guy, David Montgomery, um, just played in a scheme similar to what the Dolphins are in in terms of a zone based run scheme. Um, projected three years, 21 mil. So once again, not too expensive. He's one of the bigger backs, so he'd be more of a power guy than a speed guy, which is fine. I'd, I'd like a guy that can kind of do it all, but I think Dave Montgomery could be a potential option, similar kind of along the lines of Miles Sanders. Either want the Dolphins to kind of go by committee with investing little resources into it or just go out and get a top guy, which we'll break down further. Another similar guy to the previous mentioned, Kareem Hunt. Projected two years, 14 million. Obviously, a very dynamic player um, with the Browns. And then, obviously, the Chiefs, he was very good. But then, once he's with Nick Chubb, he doesn't have that much of a workload. But, like I said, similar to Montgomery and Sanders. And I honestly have questions about his character, uh, especially bringing him in a city like Miami. I don't know if that would pan out well. So, I don't know if I'd really want Kareem Hunt. But his skill set's very good. And I think the Dolphins could utilize him very well. But going on to the higher end running backs that I'm sure a lot of Dolphins fans are clamoring for, Tony Pollard obviously was one of the hottest running backs in all of football this past season. Um, projected three years, 27 million, which I honestly think he's going to hit way further than that. I honestly see him getting over 10 million a year on average. So I think a three year, $27 million deal, I'd honestly be for the Dolphins doing. I just don't necessarily see him going for that cheap. But if so, I'd be all for the Dolphins making that deal. Like I said, I, I really do think that's a low number for him, but he fits the scheme to a T. He's extremely athletic, big play. Anytime the ball's in his hands, can catch the ball, can run the ball. So if you can get him for that value, I think you go for it. Overall, though, like I said, I don't think he goes for that cheap. So I don't know if he's really that. I don't want the Dolphins to spend top dollar at the position, but if it happens, I'm going to support it. I'm going to be excited to see how it'll work, but I'm kind of more for Raheem Moster, Jeff Wilson, Ahmed, draft the guy and just best buy committee and hopefully the O-line improves. But then the last name on this list that I think kind of fits the scheme, I didn't obviously list every running back. I'm going with guys that I think potentially have a chance. Saquon Barkley, 
Uh, he's been linked to the Dolphins. I remember last year, people wanted us to trade for him. Obviously, Saquon Barkley is a dynamic playmaker, very lethal with the ball in his hands, a super athlete. Runs, He's big but can run fast, very athletic. Um, he's only 26 years old, just had a bounce back year from the injuries and whatnot. Once again, can do it all, catch the ball, run the ball, pass, protect. Projected contract, four years, 50 million, so it's about 12 and a half per year. Once again, I don't think the Dolphins go and spend big money at the running back position, but I'd rather them take a big swing than go sign a guy for like Chase Edmonds or Jordan Howard, guys in the past where we sign them for like two years, 12 mil, like just like it takes up money, but they're not going to be that big, much of a difference maker. Either go by committee with the Raheem Moster, Jeff Wilson, Ahmed for like probably you can probably get combined all three of those guys for under six mil or go out and take a big swing and get a guy like Saquon Barkley or um, Tony Pollard or maybe make a trade for Dalvin Cook. So that's it for the running back position. Now we're going to go over to tight ends. I only got three people on this list. There's not a lot of options that I think would be clear cut better than Durham Smythe. I think there's only one guy on this list that's clear cut better than Durham Smythe which is Dalton Schultz. Um, Dalton Schultz would make a humongous difference in this game. He'd be our George Kittle, but he comes at a hefty price of a projected four-year $60 million. I don't think the Dolphins can necessarily afford that, uh, or if they could, I think they'd rather spread the assets out overall than spending that all at tight end. But once again, Dalton Schultz in the run game is a hell of a blocker, and he's very dynamic in the passing game as well. So I'd be for making a move for Dalton Schultz. At that price, is a little steep. But I think he'd really take this offense to the next step. Um, some other guys I have on this list, Hayden Hurst with the Bengals, former first-round pick, I believe, with the Raven? I, I forget. He, he's moved around a couple years. Um, but projected one year, 6.8 mil. Not a terrible price, but like I said, I Durham Smythe serviceable enough at his low of a salary that I'd rather just rock with uh, Durham and draft the guy than spent seven mil on a guy like Hayden Hurst. So it's just a name that I put on the list. And then the last guy I got here is Robert Tunyon, projected one year, five mil. Once again, not a long-term deal, so you protect yourself in terms of that, but five mil, when you have a guy like Durham Smythe, who's gonna be able to block well, and is gonna catch the ball, he's not gonna be very dynamic after the catch, but in terms of just being serviceable, he is that. So I don't know if I necessarily waste the money at a, a mid-tier tight end like that. Hopping at the next position, left guard, once again, this is a position that the Dolphins could add to, but I, I think the Dolphins kind of, this is a very hot topic over Dolphins Twitter, but the Dolphins offensive line currently stands is probably Tron Armstead, Liam Eikenberg, Connor Williams, Robert Hunt, Austin Jackson. The two biggest holes would be left guard and right tackle, but the coaching staff does seem more impressed at left guard and right tackle than I'd say the fan base does. I don't think they're going to go out and sign starters based where we are financially. I think they're going to add competition, but I don't think they're necessarily going to go and sign a clear starter, um, like some of the names I might mention, <clears throat> at least at left guard, maybe right tackle because that's a more important position. But some of the left guards I'm going to name, Dalton Risner, projected four years, $38 million. He's a perfect scheme fit. I think he's from he's is from the Broncos, um, very good in the zone-based scheme. Um, he, he'd be a plug-and-play. But like I said, do you want to invest that much money at left guard when you can say say you sign a left uh, right tackle and you're going to have a competition with Liam Eikenberg, Austin Jackson, um, Robert Jones, and whoever else you might bring in. I think that might be the better route than spending big money at guard. But that's a potential name to look out for. Another guy, Nate Davis with the Titans, projected three years, $22 million. Once again, solid scheme fit. He'd be very serviceable. But do you want to spend that money on a guy – who you might be able to get similar or better play from from internal guys that are already on the payroll to be seen. And then this is a guy that I'd actually be for signing, Trey Turner. Uh, I think he was with the Steelers last. He's been hopping around the league since the Panthers. I think it went Panthers, Chargers, then Steelers. But he'd be a solid, cheap option for veteran depth and competition. Projected two years, 5.3 mil. So it's not too expensive. You get the guy that at worst is depth and can compete and help teach the young guys or at best is a starting left guard for you. So for that price tag, I would actually maybe take a swing there. But at the last offensive position is going to be right tackle. <clears throat> this guy I'm about to name is probably most Dolphins fans top free agent target, which is Mike McGlinchey. Obviously 
was with Mike McDaniel in the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, he's the right tackle. He's only 28 years old, projected four years, 60 mil. So $15 million, you get a blindside tackle. You fill your probably biggest need on the offensive line. I'm very for this signing. The money's not terrible for a blindside guy, but do the Dolphins pull the trigger? We don't have the most assets in the league. We can probably afford to make one decently big signing. I don't know if we can make that move, but if we do, that'd be somewhere to look. Another guy in name who might be better than Mike McGlinchey, but he's going to be more expensive, is Caleb McGarry with the Atlanta Falcons. He's projected four years, $70 million. He's an absolute mauler in the run game. <clears throat> absolute stud. I don't think he, I think he's out of the Dolphins' price range, quite frankly. But <laughs> if, we're, if we're going big at right tackle, he's someone to for sure look at. And last but not least, kind of along the same lines of Trey Turner is George Fant, previously of the Jets. He's projected two years, 6.6 .6 mil, uh, but he's a swing tackle. He provides depth, and he honestly had some very good moments with the Jets. He's just got some injury history, but for 3.3 .3 a year, you bring him in. At, once again, similar to Trey Turner. At worst, he's a veteran depth player that can play left tackle and right tackle if someone's hurt. At best, you have a starting tackle who plays pretty well. So I think it wouldn't be an awful idea to maybe take a swing there and shore up the, the depth of the offensive line. So worst case scenario, you've got him playing or him competing. But that's going to be it for today's video. Next video is going to be targeting the defensive free agents. And then I'm going to go over my top free agent target and then probably a mock off season. But if you guys have any suggestions, drop them down below. I appreciate anyone for watching. It means a lot to me. Like and subscribe to help the channel grow. Until next time, I'll catch y'all.